Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What he said, DC, where you at? Well, I'm saying KDMI, where you at? Honduras, where you at? El Salvador, where you at? India, where you at? England, where you at? Everybody who loves the Lord, where you at? Let's just raise our hand and praise the Lord. For the Lord our God is great and our God is greatly to be praised. I like that song. Where you at? We're here in the sanctuary of the Lord, giving him praise and thanksgiving on this first Sunday in December in the year 2023. Let us give God much praise. The psalmist wrote, I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. So let us join together today and let us praise the Lord with our whole heart in this assembly of the upright. For we know that our God, who is the Lord God omnipotent, who reigns forever and ever, that the works of our Lord are great. It is studied by all who have pleasure in him. His works are honorable. His works are glorious. His works are magnificent. As a matter of fact, you and I are the works of his hand. And we are made marvelous and our soul know it right well. So we ought to be giving God praise because we are his handiwork. And no one can take that away. He makes all things beautiful. And guess what? His wonderful works are to be remembered. So if his works are be to remember, guess what? You and I will be remembered. For the Lord our God is gracious and full of compassion. On this day, I don't know about you, but if you purpose in your heart, to rejoice and be glad in the Lord. If you purpose this day to stir up the joy that is within you, if you purpose this day to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, with all your strength, if you purpose to do that, come on, just clap your hands right where you are. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, let's purpose to do it. Purpose to stir up the joy purpose in it because there is one out there seeking to devour you. There is one who wants to steal your joy. There's one who wants to steal your faith. There's one who wants to steal your happiness. There's one who wants to steal every blessing that the Lord has given you. So just clap your hands, all you people that are shout to the Lord with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. 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 Y'all know prophet love the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. I love the Lord. Hallelujah. And I don't play with them. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't play with them. I'm scared of them. Uh, you know how some people say, I, I ain't scared. Well, guess what? I'm scared of the Lord because I know that with the blink of the eye, I could be no more. And that's a reverential fear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to uh, ask our fine mother Davis to open us up in prayer this morning. Uh, and as she opens us up with prayer, when she completes it, we're going to ask the songbird of the morning, Minister Beverly Grace, to come 
and uh, lead us in worship song. Now, listen, y'all, I know we're at our homes. I know that wherever you are watching this, come on here, there can be distraction. So today, mm, if you've never done this before and you're in your home and there's something in your house that would take your focus away, shut the door. Mm, and shut it out, hallelujah, so that we can focus and give praise unto the Lord God Almighty, all right? And if you are watching this uh, from San Salvador and Honduras and you're in church, uh, buenas noches, no, not buenas noches, buenas dias, that's good morning, good morning and welcome, and y'all dance a little bit for us, hallelujah, uh, uh, dance a little bit for us. We, we don't mind if you jump up and dance and clap and do all of that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So Mother Davis, would you open us up in prayer and with whatever scripture the Lord has laid on your heart? Hallelujah. Glory be unto God. Bless his holy name this morning. I'm going to be reading to you from Isaiah the 26th first and second verse. In that day shall this song be sang, song in the land of Judah. We have a strong city, salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Open ye the gates that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter. And I wanna read one more verse to you this morning. And it is coming from Philippians. And I'm going to read the third chapter, starting with the 12th verse. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after. If that I may apprehend, that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. And I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Oh God, this morning, I thank you, Father. We come to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye nations. We come to serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God, it is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. So enter into the gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come to you this morning. We come, Heavenly Father, giving you thankful for everything that you've done for us, God. But first, we give you all the glory. We give you glory because you already have glory, but we respect you, Father God, by giving you glory. We thank you because you are the one and only God and besides you, there is no other God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that your mercy endures to every generation. We thank you this morning, oh God, on this first day of December and which soon one more month, it'll be the first of another year. Oh God, we thank you, Father God, that we are gonna stand at the gate of righteousness. And we're going to go through that gate, oh God, and forget what is behind us, God. But we're going to look forward to the things that you have for us, oh God. We're going to look forward to use the gifts that you have given us, oh God, for your people. We're going to go through that gate and take in Father God's salvation to those who need salvation. We're going to move in the spirit, Father God, and not in our flesh. As we go through that new gate, oh God, we see all turmoil all around us. But that's okay, Father God, because you know, you said that you would be with us always, even until the end. 
So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. We thank you this morning, oh God, as we move through that gate, Father God, that God has opened for us, Father God, that we are going to move in the anointing and the power of God. We are going to move against the evil works of darkness. Oh God, we are going to step in for compassion for those that need compassion. We are going to move, Father God, with more love for one another and praying for one another. We are going to move in you in the righteousness of Christ, oh God, because we know that our righteousness is nothing but filthy rags. God, we're not going to move in what man has told us to move in, but we are going to move and be in tune with the spirit of the living God. We're going to tune our ears to you and drown out what the enemy say to us, oh God. And we're going to shod our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, taking the territories of God as we move through this righteous gate that belongs belongs to you, Father God, putting out those things that need to be put down and building up the things that need to be built up. And God, we thank you this morning and we give you glory this morning, oh Father. We give your glory and honor and praise this morning. We thank you for this technology, oh God, as I say, as we come together, we come together to give you thanks. We come together to worship you. We come together to praise you, Father God. So move everything, Father of God out of our mind. Forgive us for all of our sins, oh God, known and unknown, seen and unseen, heard and unheard, in thought, word, and in deed. Oh God, for this ministry, Father, we ask you to bless our missionaries that is over the world, Father God, in other countries, oh God. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ for them, oh God, as we go forth through this gate, oh God, knowing that God is with us, Father, and that we will will take the territories. And in this hour, Heavenly Father, in the newness, that will be turmoil all around us. But the believers shall stand, and above all, they shall stand. Knowing when to stand, knowing when to fight, knowing when to draw back, knowing when God said to us, stand still and know that I am God. Knowing when God says, stand still, this is not your fight. This is my fight. Oh, God, we thank you this morning. Oh, God, we thank you for the speaker of the hour, oh God, that will bring us a word from God. And as my sister say, don't let anything distract you from the word because we need the word. It is our sword, Father God. And let us not be here just hearers of the word, readers of the word, but let us be doers of the word that we read and that we hear. And oh God, anoint the speaker, oh God, which will make speaking easy. Father God, in the name of Jesus, anoint the psalmist that will make singing easy. Oh God, my Father, Heshekova, Ashanda, the Dios, Sanda, the Dios, share. Oh. Oh, God, let us go through that gate with the sword in our hands, Father God. But you have given it to us, God. You said you give us all power and authority over all the evil of the enemy, Father God. And let us not look back. Don't look back to the things in the past. Not even the things that you were doing in the past. But God said, I'm doing a new thing right now. A new thing. A powerful thing. A thing that I spoke of in the word and told that Jesus told us to do. Oh God, laying a hand on the sick, raising the dead. Oh God of my father, thank you this morning. Give you glory this morning. Give you honor this morning. Oh, we lift your name up on high this morning. And if there's anybody out there that feel that all hope is gone, grab hold to faith, grab hold to a prayer that may have been prayed over you a long time ago and move out in the spirit of the living God. And God, we thank you this morning. Oh, we bless your holy name. In Jesus name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name, Father God. We worship you today, God. Hallelujah. Precious Jesus, how I love thee, how I live, how my voice with your praise. Holy Spirit, I implore thee, 
Drench my heart as my lips part your praise. Precious Jesus, now I love thee. How I live, how my voice with your praise. Holy Spirit, I implore thee, drench my heart as my lips part your praise. For I am persuaded, Lord, to love you. I have been changed to bless your name. I constrain by this great gospel forever to worship thee. Hallelujah! I am persuaded, Lord, to I have been changed to bless your name. Glory, I am constrained by this great gospel forever to worship. Thee. And let's sing it one more time. I am persuaded, Lord, to love you. I have been changed to bless your name. I am constrained by this great gospel forever to worship thee forever, forever to worship of thee hallelujah as long as i live forever to worship thee hallelujah forever forever to worship thee because i love you i love you yes god i love you lord today because you care for me in such a special way that's why i praise you i lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. You pay the price for me. Way back on Calvary, that's why I praise you. I love I lift you up and I magnify your name. 
That's why my heart is filled. Hallelujah. That's why my heart is filled. Oh, yes, God. That's why my heart is filled. Hallelujah. That's why my heart is filled. That's why, that's why my heart is filled with praise, Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you, Lord, today because you care for us in such a special way and that's why we praise you we lift you up and we magnify your name that's why our hearts are filled hallelujah that's why our hearts are filled that's why our hearts are filled hallelujah that's why our hearts are filled that's why our hearts are filled with praise hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus glory to your name I love you, Lord, today because you cared for me. Come on, in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise come on we can go on and on and sing that i love you i love you i love you lord today because you care for me in such a special way that's why i praise you i lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why our hearts are filled with praise. Come on, give him praise. 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 Matter of fact, on this last first Sunday in the year, let us do something we haven't done in quite a bit of time. Hallelujah. Let everybody unmute and let us just begin to shout glory. Let us disturb Hallelujah. whatever could come in. Hallelujah. And mess it up. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to the Lamb of God. 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 Glory to the Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I feel the host of the Maybe don't Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's be the Lord our God. You can mute now. Doesn't it feel good to release that praise into the atmosphere? Hallelujah. There's nothing like praising the Lord, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And yes. when the enemy, if he think he can zap you of your strength, hallelujah, he will zap you of your joy. But today, hallelujah, you just released the joy. You just released the praise. You stirred it all up. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We serve the great I am. Our God was before time. He is time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He created time, hallelujah, and he created seasons just for us, hallelujah. So this season is a season of thanksgiving. Of course, for us, every day is a thanksgiving, but this is a season of thanksgiving and of joy, hallelujah. We thank you, Mother Davis, for the prayer. We thank you, Minister Beverly Grace, for uh, the, that song, and we thank you, hallelujah, for obeying and releasing uh, th those shouts of praise and thanksgiving. We welcome you. We welcome you to Kingdom Deliverance Ministries International, where our pastors are Pastor Jimmy C. Thompson Jr. and Prophet Natalie Thompson. Hallelujah. We give God thanks and praise for the angels of this house and we welcome you wherever you are seeing this broadcast from whatever time of day you are seeing this broadcast we welcome you and we thank you for joining in we want you to know it is not an accident that you came across us or you came intentionally for there is a word of the Lord and from the Lord for all of us today, including you, you and you. So thank you for joining with us by whichever social media that you came across. We thank you for joining with us. Hallelujah. And we praise your name. But now it's time for our meal. And y'all know that here at Kingdom Deliverance Ministries, we have a master chef. I know that they've got master chefs on TV and all of this stuff, but we got the master chef at Kingdom Delivery. He knows how to serve up a meal. Now, listen, we know that every chef does not serve things the same way, but if they're a master chef, hallelujah, it's going to be good. So listen, you know, this master chef that we have may not serve it up like another master chef, hallelujah, in his delivery, but he going to serve you up something good. So whether you like lobster or whether you like steak, whether you like dessert or whether you like an appetizer, whether you like all of those biscuits that you don't have any business having, or whether you just like to have a salad, either way, you're going to get a full meal here today. Can I tell you, hallelujah. Yes, I'm bragging on on our apostle, we are going to get an apostolic meal today. Glory to God. How about that? Hallelujah. An apostolic meal. An apostolic meal is more than a seven course meal. It is whatever the Holy Ghost gives us. So let us welcome the next voice that we're about to hear. Our own apostle, Jimmy C. Thompson, Jr., 
our apostolic covering and our chef for today. Let us welcome him with a preach, teach apostle Jimmy C. Thompson Jr. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Prophet Kern. Amen. Bless be the Lord our God forevermore. Bless be the Lord our God from this time forth and forevermore. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. And uh, I'm telling you, I really I, I feel the presence of the Lord in the midst of our gathering um, uh, in such a special way today. God is always and we never take it for granted that when we come together, that God meets us in this place, that God has purpose because the Bible says, wherever I find my name recorded, that I will come with a blessing. And so we record the name of the Lord in the midst of this gathering and God is always faithful to meet us. And I'm telling you this morning, as Prophet Kern began to, uh, to usher and began to uh, release the instruction for praise, I felt a breaking in the praise. The Bible declares that God has gone up in a shout. And I want you to know that when the praises of the Lord goes forth out of the mouth of the children of God, there is God going up in the midst of the shout. And the Bible says, when let God arise, let every enemy be scattered. And I want you to know, hallelujah, hallelujah, at the releasing of the praise, at the voice and the shout of praise, God moved in the midst of the praise. And I declare to you that there is a breaking. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I witnessed a breaking in the spirit. There's some things that was breaking, amen, even as the spirit of the Lord moved uh, uh, to give the instruction to release the praise. Hallelujah. God takes the foolish things to confound the wise. But I declare to you this morning, amen, God, amen, has begun to break, amen. There's some things that's breaking. There's some things that's breaking. To God be the glory forevermore. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I'm grateful to the Lord, amen. And I want to honor um, Prophet Nat, amen. Prophet Natalie, glory to God. And um, to all of the saints at KDMI, uh, the city of the Lord, we love you uh, so much and appreciate the Lord for you. Uh, we want to honor um, the, uh, Evangelist Ali Santiago, um, and the saints also that are in uh, El Salvador and Honduras, and we appreciate the Lord and give God glory and praise for the supernatural work that God continue to do uh, in El Salvador and in Honduras, amen, and even the other uh, regions round about there. God is a wonder. Hallelujah. The, the, the saints used to declare, he is a wonder in my soul. Hallelujah. Amen. I know sometimes they should sing, uh, 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 I'd look back and wonder how I got over. Well, I don't have to wonder. Glory to God. I look back and celebrate how I got over because I know it was the Lord that brought us through. Hallelujah. So to God be the glory and the honor and the praise. Hallelujah. Let me get to the text. Amen. Glory to God. I felt a whole nother wind. Amen. Praise God. I felt a whole nother wind. God is up to something great. God is up to something great. I want to decree that prophetically today. God is up to something great. 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 Things are not as they appear. God is up to something great. The greatness of the Lord is moving throughout the land. The Bible says that all creation will know that he is God. All creation will know that he is God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. Let me, let me, let me try to come in. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. But I'm telling you, saints, I want you to, from this day, you know, and I, I, I'm, I'm talking to all of us as a collective body of people. Do, do not let your eyes become captive by what you see in the natural. God is up to something great. God is up to something great. Prophet Karen mentioned about the master chef. Let me tell you something. God is cooking up something so amazing. Your eyes haven't seen it yet. Your ears haven't heard it yet. It hasn't even entered into your heart, but it's in the spirit. God is doing it. Amen. And when it manifests, it's going to be big. 
Hallelujah. It's going to be big. And it's going to be worth the wait. Hallelujah. So this morning, I want to call your attention to a couple passages of scripture. Amen. Glory to God. Um, out of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and uh, verse 17, 18. And um, I'm reading out of the King James Version. Excuse me, Second Corinthians chapter four, verse seventeen and eighteen, <clears throat> and then we're going to go over to Hebrews chapter eleven, um, and we'll read verse three, and then we'll read verses eight through eleven. And uh, I was really so blessed. God is so amazing how He uh, puts things together, and even from the beginning of the broadcast. Um, I done dated myself when I said broadcast, Lord Jesus. Amen. All right. <laughs> Amen. But from the beginning, God has been confirming his word. And, um, and to God be the glory. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, 18 says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, work it, work it as a servant. So, the light affliction, Paul calls it light. To us, it seems major. Nevertheless, it is an affliction. And our perception and understanding of affliction is it's evil towards us. But Paul is saying our light affliction, number one, he's shifting the, 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 the intent of this affliction from being a heavy, something that is uh, damaging or destroying, he says, it's light. He said, which is but for a moment. So now Paul establishes a boundary that this is not something that's gonna be a lifetime event. This is not something that's going to uh, uh, take us down. He says, it's only for a moment. But in all of this affliction, it is as a servant because it's working for us. Not against us. Even though we understand that adversity and afflictions and, and all of these things come from the kingdom of darkness. But the intent of the kingdom of darkness at its release to when it comes to us, it completely shifts. Because the Bible says that, that what the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it and make it work, cause it to work for our good. He says, but these light afflictions, which are only for a moment, so, so please uh, just note that about time. Only for, it's for a moment. He says, but it's working for us as a servant for far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, which suggests to us that in order to arrive at this new dimension of glory, that we have to be ushered into this moment and this time, this season and purpose and dimension of glory by a servant called affl affliction. Okay, so Paul says now he gives us this understanding in verse 18 of how we ought to set ourselves. So now that we have this understanding, this is how we ought to position ourselves. He says, while we look not at the things which are seen. Mm -hmm. In other words, while we do not look at what is already in place. While we do not look at what is already a uh, seen, while we do not look at what is already a tangible presence, but at the things which are not seen, but the things which are seen are temporal. Then he says for us the precedence for how we are to operate now. So our position is we do not look at the things which are seen, or the things that are already in place or things that are already in motion as a finality or 
determine this to be the final outcome. But understand that in looking at the things that are seen, that it is only the backdrop, if you will, or it becomes, and most of us understand with a painter, a painter uses a a an, a, a board, or if you will, for lack of words, but the, the 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 that he draws on, and it simply becomes the paper that he draws on simply become the backdrop, or it becomes the object on which what he has in his mind to plan becomes the object or destination of what's in his mind. Let me say that again. So we're looking at afflictions oftentimes as a as something that is harming or something that is damaging or something that is going to deter or destroy us. But Paul's saying that we have to now look at it from a different place now, that we have to look at it as simply the opportunity or the place, or the 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 uh, I'm trying to think of the word uh, the the painters of uh, 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 what's the word here uh, the paper. Let's let's just stay with that. But we have to look at the things that are seen now that already exist as the backdrop, the paper on which watch this and in which the vision of God is going to manifest in. He says, while we don't look at that as a deterrent to what we see, what we know, and what is in the unseen realm, because if you look at what's already established, if you look at what's already created, the enemy will work in that to steal from you your faith, the ability of faith, which is creator as a creative, from bringing into existence what already exists, what is the preceding word and plan and purpose of God, and you'll be stuck looking at what is, or what is present, rather than what is in the spirit. He says, but while we look not at those things that are seen because they're temporal, they're subject to change. There's a law of God in this natural world, in this natural order, that's governed by temporality or or temporal. It is a law. Everything in creation in this natural world is governed by a law called temporal. Let me say it again. Everything in creation, this natural world we live in, is governed by a law called temporal. And we're gonna we're gonna explore that some more. Called temporal, meaning it's subject to change. Mm-hmm. He said, but the things which are are not seen are eternal. Okay. So let's let's go to Hebrews chapter three. I mean, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 11. And we're going to start reading at verse number three. And then we're going to skip to verses eight through 11. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3 says, through faith, we understand that worlds, that the worlds were framed by the word of God. And we know that the word of God is faith. Through faith, we understand. We understand by faith. And we understand by faith that the worlds that we see, we live, exist in, were created by the same faith that's given us this understanding to let us know this is how it came about. Okay, we understand through faith that uh, the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things, watch this, which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And I wanna park here for a moment because this is what in, uh, uh, the, I wanna talk to you this morning for a few minutes from the subject entitled, The Operations of Faith the operations of faith, the operations of faith. So we we see here how faith operates. We see a dimension of how faith operates. It is the word of God 
The word of faith, Paul says, even in Romans chapter 10, the Bible says that when we are saved, it is the word of faith that saves us. Then he picks it up again in Romans 16. He says, therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise is sure. And what it means by sure, it doesn't mean that uh, um, 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 the, the promise is uh, necessarily confirmed. It means uh, uh, through grace, the promise is uh, laid hold on or possessed or taken possession of, okay? Just walk with me for a few minutes. So, so it is by faith. It is the word of faith. We're saved by faith. So Paul, uh, uh, so reading on in uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8, let me try not to get ahead of myself. Um, verse 8, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed and he went out not knowing whither he went or where he was going. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country. I'm gonna try to contain myself, okay. Dwelling in tabernacles, watch this, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, and when it says with Isaac and Jacob, it's saying also as Isaac and Jacob, who also were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith, also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age time because she judged him, God, faithful. That word judge actually means make a determination, a judgment, render a verdict. So she, she, she rendered a verdict concerning God that he is faithful who promised, okay. Now, even when, um, and I was really blessed again as the service began, even when Mother Davis read the scripture um, out of Philippians talking about the high call of God where Paul was uh, declaring, he said, brethren, I count on myself to have apprehended because Paul understood through the word of faith that everything that I have acquired, everything that I've accumulated, everything that I have gone through and experienced even up to now is not the fullness, that there is more beyond this, that Everything that I've acquired, everything I, I have accumulated, everything I have learned, everything that I have experienced has only been to now at this juncture to become a part of the foundation concerning what God has said about me. That this is all in the sense of building and working that this is all just a part of it, but not the finality of it. And so Paul has a revelation through the word of faith that now it's time to shift my posture, it's time to shift my perspective, it's time to shift my gaze, it's time to shift my understanding because whenever the word of the Lord comes through faith, it will always deal with your understanding and your vision because you and I will need to come into a new understanding Amen. The, the same way when God brings us into a new day, the Bible says every new day, morning by morning, new mercies we see. Even the, the principle of operation of God of bringing us into a new day uh, suggests to us that the mercy and grace uh, that we and favor we had yesterday 
is was sufficient for yesterday, but in this new day, because of the assignment, the purpose, and the dimension of what God wants to release and do in this day, it mandates a new mercy and a new grace that is mantled with the assignment of today. So that we are not living and operating in what was because it's a new day. The Bible even says when we come to God and we are saved, he says, all things are what passed away and all things have become have become new. And the reason we have to receive, uh, we have to move away from all things, the old things, because the only way we can operate in what's new is it has to be by faith and it has to be by what God is saying now. Because the old has no place in the new. And so Paul says, I, I, I don't count myself to apprehend, have apprehended because if I count myself to have apprehended, I've already rendered a verdict. I've passed the judgment on my life that this is all I'll have. This is all it'll ever be. This is the furthest I will go. But when we think that, we're thinking by our limited mind, not by the omnipresence and, and the all-knowingness of God. <laughs> Just walk with me for a few minutes. That's why he said, I don't count, I count not myself to have apprehended. And I want to just pause to tell somebody this morning, listen, no matter where you are, even in this very moment of your life and what's going on in your life, no matter how great or how much pressure the weight of what the, the moment and what the situations and circumstances you are encountering now or the enemy is trying to work in to put on you, or even if you, you perceive yourself, don't pass a judgment and render a final verdict on your life in this moment. It's only a moment. It is only a moment. It is not the totality of your life. It is not the totality of the plan of God for you. It is not what God has ordained for you at the end. There is more beyond this. This is just a step in the journey. As a matter of fact, can you just uh, just indulge me for a moment and just declare that over yourself? This, where I am now, is just a step on a journey God has me in. He says, Paul says, I, I don't count myself to have apprehended. Uh, hallelujah. Help me, Holy Ghost, with this time. <clears throat> He says, I don't count, I don't, I don't count myself to have apprehended. I'm not counseling myself out. I'm not going to uh, allow past this judgment that this is all there will ever be. He said, this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind. Now we know when he said forget, he's not talking about we just dismiss it. Forgetting means we 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 cast it down to the foundation. It becomes a foundation that enables us to go up to higher heights and deeper levels in God. Because everything we experience, everything we acquire in God never gets wasted, is never lost it. It all becomes a part of the foundation. And the Bible says this, that if the foundations of the, of the righteous, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous, righteous do? And so God constantly establishes our foundation by everything that we, we, we acquire, everything we experience, it becomes a part of that. He said, Nevertheless, the foundation, what? Stands sure. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to God. If we wasn't on Zoom, I, I believe I'll take a run. The foundation stands sure. The foundation stands sure. I'm, I, I'm speaking to someone who it seems like everything around you is shifting and changing, seems like your world is being turned upside down, and you're trying to make sense out of what's going on, and it seems like you can't get a handle on what is happening in life. I want you to understand the foundation is still intact. The foundation stands sure. You're not sinking. You're not going down. You're not moving out. You're in transition. God is shifting what you have acquired to this point and he's causing it to become uh, to, to firm and to establish uh your foundation so that you can move to the next place in god in him okay uh reaching forward to those things that are behind he says i press toward the mark for the high prize of god and the high calling of god in christ jesus 
even as Mother Davis was praying and she quoted that scripture, let me tell you, this is the hour indeed that the, the body Christ, that there is a pressing forth into the mark. There's a high call. If you're wondering what's going on and why things seem to be um, in a seemingly chaotic state, uh, it is not falling apart. Um, things are not going just helter skelter. No, you're in transition. And God is shifting and changing things because there's a word over your and my life that God declared over us over us from the beginning. And, and even as Prophet Kern declared about time and seasons, that God sets times, God sets the seasons. The Bible says in Acts 17 that God who created all men from one blood, that it is God who has ordained and established boundaries, even a place where we dwell. Let me, let me just park here for a moment and just declare this, that even where you live, I know you chose to move there, but I want you to understand that there was a higher law, there was a higher call, there's a higher work that was working that caused you to choose where you are, because why? In that place, in that realm of where God has assigned you as a child of God, there are things in that realm that has to receive the righteousness of God, and God strategically planted you there. Hallelujah. 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 There are spoils in the place where you are. Okay, that's a whole nother mess for a different day. Hallelujah. So we got to press. We have to press. What we see now is not all there is. What we see now, there's more to what we, then it's more than what we see. Hallelujah. So the Bible says when we talk about the operation of faith, um, and even as uh, I said, the scripture was declared, God said to me that there is a pressing for that the body of Christ needs to really press forward. Paul says that even as we press forward towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, he says, let us therefore as many as be perfect. That word perfect actually means mature and complete. Be complete in maturity. Be thus minded. And this is where God is calling the body to. He's bringing the body to this place, another dimension of spiritual maturity to make us complete in this uh, a measure of spiritual maturity so that we are thus minded. We are like minded with God. We are like minded in faith so that we can begin now, as Paul told Timothy uh, in First Timothy, so that we can, when he said to fight the good fight of faith, we can lay hold on eternity. There's something that God wants to manifest in the earth. And it is only going to manifest through the operations of faith. Faith is the only one that's going to bring this into existence. Now, when we talk about, I wanted, I wanted to just uh, set the precedence here and uh, uh, give some definitions. The word operation means the fact or condition of functioning or being active. The word builder means a person who constructs something by putting parts or materials together over a period of time. I want you to keep that in your mind about time. A person who constructs something by putting materials, or parts or materials together over a period of time. In the Greek, that word builder means founder, creator, it means craftsman. The word maker by Webster's definition means a person or thing that makes or produces something. So in other words, um, you have the maker is the one who has the blueprint, the design of it. The builder is the one who puts together what the design is. So when the Bible talks about Abraham looked for a city whose builder and maker was God, He was looking for a city or going after a city who God made and God built. Okay. So talking about the operations of faith, the Bible declares in Jeremiah 29, 11, a scripture that we've quoted many times, both for enlightenment and for encouragement says, but I know the thoughts I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. The plans and the blueprints belong to God. 
The process belongs to God. Whenever we set out to obey God in anything that he instructs us to do, we have to first settle it in our hearts that the whole nature, the design, the purpose, and even all the experiences of it from the beginning of a thing all the way through to the completion of it is going to be an undertaking of faith. That's why Hebrews says that we understand through faith that even the worlds, everything tangible that we experience, everything that we interact with, everything that we um, we deal with in this natural realm was all created by the word of God, which is faith. The Bible says now uh, faith uh, 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 about faith that uh, faith cometh by hearing, sorry, and hearing by the word. So we know that the word is faith. The word of God is faith. God is faith. Okay. So when we understand that, we get to see in Jeremiah 29, 11, through the word think. Just walk me for a minute. I, uh, I, I'm trying to take my time. We understand in Jeremiah 29, 11, through the word think, we get to see an insight into the mind of God. Because that word think reveals to us that there is a progressive flow. He says, I know the thoughts that I think. There's a progressive flow of God's thoughts concerning us. And if there's a flow, then God is building and then God's crafting something. Okay. When, when, when God said to Abram, I want you to move out from your family. God only revealed to Abraham a thought, not thoughts. He said, well, Apostle, what do you mean by that? Because God did not reveal to Abraham where he was going. He only told Abraham to get out. And Abraham had to utilize faith. And I want to just uh, park here for a moment to just declare even to us the body of Christ that even as we're in this hour, no matter what we see manifest in our physical world, um, we have to remember that it is all a backdrop. When we talk about the operations of faith, because we know that that God has purpose, uh, uh, and that God has a plan, and that God has called us as the body of Christ. We know about the Great Commission because the Bible says God is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to uh, uh, salvation, come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Jesus said to the disciples, go into all the world, preach the gospel, amen, make disciples. In order to do that, in order to engage in that, that's that. all of that is the dynamic and assignment of faith. Because you, we, you and I will have to engage with what already exists in order to to bring to pass or create through faith what is what is not already seen okay so we will have to move in faith so when god created everything he did it from eternity then once it was created and brought into a physical tangible and natural existence god then created time as we see in genesis 1 3 through 4 where it says that God um, uh, devised the light from the darkness and he calls the darkness, I mean, he calls the light day and he calls the darkness night. <clears throat> and the evening and the morning were the first day. Just walk me for a moment. I'm talking about the operations of faith. So God, who is faith, utilized the word of faith to speak into darkness. The Bible says, in creation. He spoke into darkness. He said, let there be light. Then he separates the two and he calls the first day. He says, he call, I'm sorry. He calls evening and morning the first day. He said, well, Pastor, where, where are you going with this? Because I want um, us to see another side of the operations of faith and how God works. We are so uh, we are so used to <clears throat> looking in day, and if we don't see something man manifested in the day in the light of things, we we sometimes tend to make a determination 
or a judgment that it is either over or it cannot be or this is impossible. But if we look at in Genesis, the order of God, the Bible says he called the evening and the morning the first day. So hidden in this text is a significant revelation of the workings of God because God calls it even the morning first day. I want to speak to somebody who feels like you're in a night season or feels like you're in the evening of your life. I want to encourage you that it's not over. And God is saying to come into an understanding, a new understanding of how he works. He spoke light into darkness. And when he separated, he established their order. He said <laughs> evening and morning was the first day. Not day and then evening was the first day. Okay. He didn't say morning and evening was the first day because that's how we perceive it. When we look at evening, we look at evening as a finality, things shutting down, things closing, things coming to an end. But in God's world, in God's mind, in God's word, evening and morning is the first day. Evening or night becomes a backdrop for the workings of God. Now we understand why the enemy always tries to come at night or in dark seasons, because you will always know where God is working based on where your enemy shows up at. Let me say that again. You can always identify where God is working by where the enemy is targeting to attack you at. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you. Glory to God. Psalm 30 and 5b says, weeping, which is characterized um, as sorrow, affliction, adversity, or not being able to see what God is doing or know how what you're seeing is going to become what God said, only endures for a night, only endures for a moment. The light affliction, Paul says, only is for a moment, a night. And it is during this time, he says, but joy comes in the morning. In other words, joy is the knowledge of who God is and the revelation of what he has done is revealed in the light or the morning. So I wanna encourage you, listen, you might be in a night season, just understand, glory to God, it ain't over. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. It ain't over, it ain't done, you're in transition. Assignment has been completed. Now the evening is necessary for God to begin to manifest another dimension. Hallelujah. So, so in the morning when joy comes, the knowledge of who God is, what he has done, is revealed, confirmed, and comes to fruition. Remember, God spoke into or he reached into darkness with his word to pull out what was hidden. And then he separated them and he called it a day. Then he establishes an order over it. Time. So be a good cheer. Know that the progressive thoughts of the Lord are working on your behalf that is causing all things, watch this, to work together, all things to work towards being the good. Because remember he said in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, they're thoughts of good and not evil. So all of these things in the evening, the dark, God is working in those seasons. Hallelujah. So that the good that he said in Jeremiah 29, 11 is going to happen. Not, on, not just because you, you and I love him. That's a blessing when we love him. But there's a higher call. He said, because you ordained and you're called to this. Hallelujah. All things work together for good to them who love the Lord and who are the called according to the purpose of God. That's why Peter said, don't think it's strange, the fiery darts and the trials that we encounter as something just, um, just haphazard just happened. No, no, no. God's working in the midst of this because there is a light, there is a knowledge and a plan of God that God hid in darkness, that when the night seasons come, the hand of God begins to work forth. See, God don't need to work in the day. 
The day, the, in the day, the light exposes what already is done. God works in the night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He works in those seasons when we don't know what he's doing. He works in those seasons when we can't trace what he's doing. That's why faith is important because the operation of faith is we stay steady. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He said, not only because you love him, but because you're ordained to this. So to some, I want to say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You've gone through the night season, but a shift in the transition has happened. Good morning. The light of day is going to reveal and confirm and manifest what God was doing on, on, during that whole time when you could not trace him. You could not see what he was doing. It didn't make sense to your natural mind. And you were trying to find a way to justify and validate, hallelujah, and explain. And you couldn't. And the enemy of your soul was trying to antagonize you with the spirit of terror and fear because you could not give a qualifiable, a validatable, if that's a word, answer to people who were looking at your life. Good morning. Joy has come. The light of what God has done is now manifested. To others, I want to say to you, glory to God, be still. Be still and know that he is God. In patience, possess your soul. Do not fear or be anxious so that you can stand still and see with your eyes the deliverance and salvation of the Lord. Okay, so let me move on. So we know in creation, God creates creation. Then the Bible says that God crowns creation, including time with man, whom he gives complete dominion to, to rule over. Everything God created from eternity as a spirit being, because he is faith, and his word he used to create uh, a word of faith. Everything comes from him, which is why the scripture said, without faith is impossible to please God. Without faith is impossible to please God. They that come to him must first believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Then the Bible says, establishes for us the just that we are to live by, this is how we live. We live from evening to, to morning. The order and the process of our life is from e evening to morning. We come in a day. These light afflictions are only for a moment, but they're working for, for, for us a far more exceeding, a greater weight of glory. This is how we as believers, the body of Christ, the sons of God, this is our lot. This is our portion. Even in the morning is the day. Light afflictions are only working as a servant for us to bring us into that dimension of glory, that, that place of, and plan, plan of God's, uh, the purpose of God's plan for our life so that we can become who God says we already are. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says in John 4, 24, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Then the Bible says in Psalm 115, verse 16, the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. So God has given us to rule over creation. Let me, let me hurry on. So Paul says, while we look not at the things which are seen, which means we do not look at what we see already existing as the final outcome or determination. The assignment of time, watch this, and this really blessed me when the Spirit of the Lord gave this to me. The assignment of time is only to be a steward, to govern and to manage what already exists. Now, let me prove it to you. Everything, the moment something breaks the womb and comes into this natural realm, the law of time is automatically activated and, and it is ordained and assigned to govern, uh, to document, to steward, and give an account to God of his faithfulness and evidence of his will and work, which is why in Ephesians 2, he says that the grace, the goodness of the Lord is so magnificent and it's, it's so abundant that every every age, every generation, time, every generation, every people group that is documented by existence in the earth, time validates the documentation of every living person in the earth. And that through that documentation, time stewards the goodness of God, his goodness is made known. That's why when we are born into the world, time documents the goodness of the Lord. You have a, a, a time 
a day, a date, a month, and a year that are all time, the law of time, that is to document a purpose of God. Let me say it again. Time is a steward. And we have to understand as a believer, we do not live by time. Let me wipe my eye for a moment. Let me say it again. As a believer, we're called to a higher calling. We do not live by time. We live by faith. Even though we utilize time because God crowns creation, including time, with mankind. And we have been given dominion over it. But time also documents our birth, our coming forth into the earth. Okay. So that it's steward, so that time stewards, but time is not the final authority. It's a servant. Okay. So in this fight of faith, and so when we talk about this evidence, so now we understand with time. So now we, we understand through time in terms of chronology, which is a succession of, of moments, of minutes, um, uh, seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks months, years, decades, centuries. If we live by time, fear will have an opportunity to come in because it will, see, it will seem as though a long time is expanded. Paul says it's a light affliction. It will seem like you're in it for a long time. But since time belongs to God and we, are, we, are, we have dominion over time, we do not live by time, we live by faith. And we are, we are assigned by God to declare and to operate in the operations of faith to utilize in time. So when the fight of faith, we talk about the fight of faith, here is when you know you're in the fight of faith. The operation of faith shows up or becomes known to us, and I pray you follow me. The operation or how faith functions or is at work shows up through a choice or a decision because you, whenever we obey God, remember Abraham stepped out. So it, it, it's, it's the fight of faith is evident by a decision. You will never know you're in faith until the moment you make a decision and a choice to obey God. The moment you make that decision, you're automatically now beginning the operation of faith. Okay. And as a result of that choice and decision, what we have to do now, we have to intentionally look past what is naturally seen to see what is not seen in order to build in the seen realm what's not seen. So the law of faith is a higher law and it's the only law that can create. Let me say that again. Faith is the only law that can create. Time can. Faith can. That's why the, the scripture admonishes that we must live by faith, that the just must live by faith. That they who come to God must first believe that he is. And without faith, it's impossible to please God because you and I would not be able to bring into being, into uh, manif manifestation what God has said without faith. And so when we get to look at our text now, the Bible says of Abraham, I'm coming in, I'm coming in. So the Bible says of, of Abraham and Sarah, that Abraham and Sarah are the vessels that God chooses to use. And there's so much more that can be said, but I, I, for the sake of time, I want to kind of bring this in and try to land this. Um, I, I, the Spirit of God began to unfold this to me um, for us, the body of Christ, to understand um, in a whole uh, more greater way, as, as Paul said in Romans uh, 12, um, to not be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. That as a believer, we have to constantly transition and shift and change to move from 
our natural understanding of what we have learned in time or according to the rules and the functioning of time um, over to faith because faith is where we come from. Faith was how we were brought in when God spoke and created, even though he formed man out of the dust, but he breathed himself into us. He breathed faith into us. And so, uh, and so, but this is how we have to operate to, to do the same in the earth. And so, uh, and so Abraham and several were vessels of faith. And I want to say to someone under the sound, or all of us actually under the sound of my voice, while we look at what's happening in our world, and to some people, um, it might appear as though it's a world out of control. Um, I want to say to you, look from the eyes of faith. Don't look at what you see already existing. Take the eyes of faith through the word of God. Look into the unseen, the, the, the realm of the spirit to see God, to see what God is wanting to do, that everything in the seen realm is only opportunities for what God has already created and ordained in the spirit to be manifested in the earth. Even concerning your life, you have to look to the word of God. Don't go by even what you feel. Don't go by um, past experiences. Look in the word of God. And the reason I say this is because Abraham and Sarah were vessels that God chose to set a whole new paradigm and precedent. To release something in the earth that God wanted to do. Abraham and Sarah were full vessels of faith that had to do something that was out of time that I was out of the law of time to order to create. And when we talk about the operations of faith, the Bible says of Abraham that he sojourned in the land. And let me just encourage somebody here. You stepped out to obey God. And it seemed like as you stepped out to obey God, everything went topsy-turvy. Or it seemed like things, nothing is going like you planned. There's nothing wrong. You're in the right place. Because the Bible says Abraham was in the land of promise. But he was in the land of promise as a sojourner. The Bible says he dwelt in tabernacles and tents. These are all mobile movement uh, uh, dwelling places. And sometimes the heart, the fear will try to grip your heart because you're in a, a mobile place. Just understand you're still in the promise. But what's happening is God is building and God is establishing what he has said about your life. And you're thinking, well, I should be in a sealed house. That time is coming. But just know in faith, Abraham dwelt in a tent and he had to keep moving. But the whole time, every time Abraham took a step, he was following in the preceding word of God, the thoughts of God, that God was consistently thinking towards him and directing his steps. And every experience that Abraham encountered when he dealt with the kings, when he had to tell the king that uh, finally come out and tell the king that Sarah was his, his wife and not his sister. And, and all, all of that, all those were experiences in faith. But it was all a progressive work that God was leading him to because God knew down the line that, there, that you and I were going to be the recipients of what Abraham did. And I want to say to somebody that, that, that to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, endure the operation of faith in your life. Just understand that you that that don't look at what you see around you and let that steal your heart of faith. Just understand that that only identifies what you are supposed to be speaking into. That time does not dictate what happens with God. The word does. Time is only a steward to manage and to govern what already exists. Once something is established in this natural realm, then faith it's time for faith to begin to work of what is not seen to bring into place what God is saying next. He says, I know the thoughts that I have and I'm coming in. I know the thoughts I have towards you. They're for good, not for evil. The light affliction is only for a moment. Abraham and Sarah had to um, be the vessels of, of faith that God wanted to use. There are people and men and women of God right now. And I, I will go as far to say that there are some people even in the world who have yet to come into God, but because of the anointing and because of the wisdom of God, 
God has given them a grace to break into new things. There are new ideas that are coming. There are witty inventions, the Bible says, are coming. They already exist in the realm of the spirit. They already exist in the mind of God. And God is forming and fashioning and calling us vessels like Abraham and Sarah to do something unprecedented, to do something new. And you cannot let your heart be stolen or, or be bound by what you see. But just understand that the word of the Lord is, is the precedent. The word of the Lord is the absolute. That what God says already exists. And God wants you and I to partner with him as children of faith, children of light, to be able to bring into manifestation in the earth realm what God has designed. Let me put it to you another way. The Bible says of Hannah that Hannah was barren. She could not, her womb was barren, was not given, just like Sarah was not And, and it seemed as though it was a curse. But really, it was not a curse. In the mind of God, Hannah was the handmaiden of the Lord that God sovereignly picked for himself because God knew that there was a Samuel, that there was a move of God that had to be rebirth, brought forth in the earth. And God mantled Hannah with the mantle of barrenness. That mantle of barrenness pushed Hannah into a whole new dimension, a whole nother higher calling and a higher dimension of prayer and intercession that caused her to reach into the heart of God to pull out what God wanted to produce in the earth. And the Bible says of Samuel being the work of God, that none of the words from Samuel's mouth fell to the ground. And I want to say to you that what might seem like affliction, what might seem like being unproductive, or you're not able to produce, nothing is happening. Just know that God has mantled you because he's trusting what he invested in you. That you're just in the middle of the operations of faith. There's not anything wrong. God is not a man that he should lie. And everything God said about your life is going to come to pass. God just needs you and I to be still. Know that he's God. That we need to, by faith, take possession, the Bible says, take possess ye your souls through patience. That we need to utilize a fruit called, a fruit, a dimension of fruit uh, called patience to take hold of our soul so that we can stand still and see the salvation of the Lord while God's working it out. The operation of faith is never seen in what, is never, uh, you, 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 always works in what, what you cannot see. And so God wants us as children to understand that in this hour that we have to press forward because there is more in God, there's more that God wants to do and we have to press forward. And the only way we can press forward is we have to give place to the operation of faith. It's not by time, it's by faith. Faith has nothing to do with how you feel, it has everything to do with who you know and what you know about God. Believe God, trust God, and it will be what God has said. Father, I thank you for this word. Thank you that your word is a lamp to our feet and light to our pathway. Thank you that the entering in of your word brings light and life. Thank you that in this season, when you have allowed us, Lord, as trees, you said in Isaiah 61, that we are trees, the planting of the Lord, that you strategically, sovereignly planted us in the time that we, even our birth date, year, month, and time was all sovereignly designed because we are the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord for such a time as this, that you, as we partner with you, we stand in faith, as we declare your word, we partner with you as Abraham and Sarah did, that your word first of faith begins to work in us to, be called, uh, to cause us, Lord, to produce in us what you have said and then produce through us in the world what you have desired. I thank you, Lord God, that in this hour, the body of Christ, that you are maturing us, that you are making us complete in you, that you're preparing us for every good work, that we are equipped, prepared, and ready and operating in the operations of faith, which is a good work because you said without it, it's impossible to please you. 
To you be the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' strong name, amen, amen. God bless you. Turn it back into your hands. Prophet uh, Brian. Amen, amen, amen. What a wonderful, what a wonderful meal we've had today. Did I not tell you we was going to have an apostolic meal? And did we not have an apostolic meal today? I I took some notes. I, I took some notes. There's so much that he said. And the good thing about technology, if you miss taking the notes, you can go back and listen to it again. That's the good thing about it. You can go back and rehearse it over and over again. But I had me some nuggets. I had me a little calamari when he said uh, shifting from heavy and terminal to light and temporary. That was my calamari. I chewed on that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That these things that are happening, what but for a moment, these light affliction. Okay. So everything that we're experiencing that we think is heavy and we think are terminal, they're light and what? Temporary. I liked it that one. I also like the one where he said, adversity was sent by the enemy for our demise, but God transforms it for our good. I crunched on that. That was some good salary right there. Come on. There's a lot that you can just crunch on. You better go back and crunch on and crunch on it. And then I had to swallow the law of temporal. Hallelujah. I drink it on down, the law of temporal, which means it's subject to change. Glory to God. I swallowed that down and it went on down into my belly and into my heart and into my memory bank. And the one that just stuck with me, I said, this one going to stick with me. Mm. You know how we say it just sticks to your ribs? Well, guess what? When he started talking about that evening and the morning, that stuck to my ribs. It stuck to my mind. And I don't know about you, but when I go to sleep tonight or when the sun sets this evening, I'm going to see evening a little bit different. Hallelujah. That's what we call transforming our mind. I'm going to see evening as the beginning of my next day, not the ending of another day. But I'm going to start seeing evening as the beginning of another day and realize that the reason we have so much trouble at night is because God's working in the night hour and the enemy is also. But guess what? We can rest while we're in the evening time because God, who neither slumbers nor sleep, is working on our behalf. Then when I wake and when the sun come up, oh, wow. I got joy and I can say, good morning, hallelujah. So that one, listen, I don't know about y'all, but I'm gonna look at it a little bit different. And guess what? We got a nugget. You know how people say, what's so good about this morning? Now we can better explain to them why it's a good morning. It has nothing to do with what you're feeling, but it has all to do with what, what? God was doing in the night hour for us. Hallelujah. Let us give God a hand clap and a hand clap of praise. God Almighty, we thank you for this word on the operation of faith. And at the end, we was talking about partnering. If you have not partnered with the Lord Jesus Christ, we offer him to you today and an opportunity to partner with him. And you say, well, how do I do that? Well, it's easy. According to uh, the scripture in Romans 10, we stand on this. In scripture Romans 10, when you come, it says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, one, believe in your heart that God has raised him, who? The Lord Jesus from the dead. The Bible says, you will be saved. So today we offer you an opportunity to be a partner and we offer salvation to you. And if you confess today, the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you are saved and we welcome you to the family of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. And now you're part of a royal priesthood and you need somewhere to work out your soul salvation with fear and trembling since you heard it here at Kingdom Deliverance Ministries International. We offer you uh, um, 
our our uh, our fellowship to connect with. We're virtual right now, uh, and so I'm gonna give you a phone number. It's a, a phone number four one zero three zero three. 6281. Call that number 410-303-6281. Someone will be at that number and you can discuss with them how you can connect with us and the things that we you would need to do. Amen. And so we love you and we welcome you again to Kingdom Deliverance Ministries International. And if you backslid, you can do the same thing. Confess Romans 10, 9, and call that number. Either way, we would like to you to come, whether you're new, you're returning, or you're just looking for a church home, you're welcome to come to Kingdom Deliverance Ministry. Now, as we continue in our worship service, this is good ground for sowing. We know that the Lord our God gives seed to the sower. And so he has given you seed and today you get to sow that seed. And we ask that uh, you sow. And when you sow, you sow cheerfully. There are many ways that you can give. One way you can give through, through Givelify. When you go through the Givelify app that's online, uh, if you've never given before, just put in Kingdom Deliverance Ministries International. You will see our logo and you'll see our pastors there and you can give through that app. The good thing about Givelify is that at the end of the year, it gives you a report of your giving. And especially for those who use it for tax, you can have an idea of your charitable donations for the year. Um, you can also give by Cash App. I believe it's the dollar sign KDMI, the city, if I have that correct, you can give that way. Um, also, if you call that phone number and you want to mail a check, they can give you the address where you can mail it to. All right. And uh, we have, if, if you want to pay by a uh, check also, and if you know any of the members uh, and you want to give us the check, we can make sure that uh, our trustees and our pastors get it. You can do it that way. So there's so many different ways to give. So now as we lift up our offering, our tithes and our offerings, two different things, tithes and offerings are two different things. So we lift up our tithes and our offering. Father, we thank you that you've given us seed to sow. Lord, we bless you. We give you glory. We sow now with the cheerful heart into good ground, ground that is fertile. And we know that as we plant and sow into this ground and it is water, that you, Lord, will give the increase. We thank you, dear God, for the increase. We thank you for continual seed in order to sow into the kingdom of the living God. It is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. People of God say amen, amen, and amen. Um, before we go, before we close out, uh, I do know that we have announcements. We have our Bible Kingdom Academy on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. by Zoom. We also have our Thursday prayer on our uh, prayer conference call line at 7 p.m. on Thursday. Now we have implemented through uh, the month of December, continuing at 6 a.m. and 12 noon, we are also having prayer on the kingdom conference line. So when you're free, any of those times, we ask that you join in with us. We would be glad to hear you and see from you. Before I turn it over to the apostle for any dismissals, uh, Prophet Natalie Thompson, hallelujah. Let us hear a word from her. Let us hear our voice. We're so happy that she's now been able to, to minister to us. She was in school for so long. And she's been set free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I am so grateful to God for the word on today. Faith is our currency, how we operate in the kingdom. So we are grateful for the word on today. And it is what we as the Christians use. It is by faith. It is truly the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Grateful for the presence of God on today from the beginning to the end. God is just a faithful God. And we just thank and praise God for what he's doing on this month of December, the last month of the year. I'm telling you, it is still time for God to do just what he said he would do. So don't you give up and don't you think but you stand in faith as the message told us today. God bless you. And we turn it back over to our own prophet, Karen. Amen, amen, amen. Do you still love him today? Hallelujah. Do you still love him today? Hallelujah. Do you still love him? If you still love him, just wave your hand a little bit. Just wave your hand, wave your hand, wave your hand, wave your hand. Hallelujah. If you're still happy in Jesus, give him a hand clap. Come on. Come. If the joy of the Lord is still your strength, come on, give him a clap. Hallelujah. If you know that you're fearfully and wonderfully made, come on, give him a hand clap. Hallelujah. If you know that you are victorious in all things, come on, give him a hand clap. Hallelujah. If you know that this light affliction is but for a moment, hallelujah, but the things of God are eternal, come on, wave your hands and give them a hand clap. Come on here, we have, hallelujah. If you know that God has flipped the script on your behalf, give them a hand clap. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you know God is omnipresent, come on, give them a hand clap. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you know that you're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus, shout glory. Hallelujah. 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 I turn it over to our apostle for our uh, closing remarks and closing prayer. Y'all know I love the Lord and I know like to stir stuff up and I don't want you to leave here the same way that you came. Hallelujah. And if you believe that you are different than when you came on at the beginning at 1030. Come on, give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. 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 Apostle, I turn it over to you. God bless everyone. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Prophet Kern. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is not an emotion. It's the knowledge of who he is. That's your strength. It's the knowledge of who God is and what he has done is your strength. And listen, this is a great, this is a great time to be alive. Amen. Even uh, against uh, what we see uh, trending, like they say, uh, this is a great time to be alive. Hallelujah. You and I were born for this. We were born for this. Hallelujah. The knowledge of God on the inside of you is so exceeding abundantly above uh, that's what makes the enemy mad every time you wake up. Because you, because God raised you up, exceeding abundantly above what he wanted to do. But to God be the glory. This is a great time, amen, to be alive. I want to just decree this as we uh, leave, as the declared a benediction over us. Hallelujah. Um, out of 2 Corinthians uh, 9 and verse 8. That as we stand and operate in faith, that the grace of God abounds towards us, that we always having all sufficiency in all things will continually abound to every good work, to the glory of God, our Father, Jesus Christ. Have a blessed day. Know that you are more than a conqueror. The great is he that is in you and he that is in the world. You just know you were called and ordained to destroy the works of the kingdom of darkness. God bless you. Have an amazing day. We love you in the Lord. It's going to help you to declare God's word and declare concerning your life. You know the Bible in Romans chapter 4 verse 19 and 20 he said in spite of being nearly a hundred years old, one hundred years old, when the promise of having a son was made his faith was so strong 
but it could not be undermined by the fact that he and Sarah were incapable of conceiving a child naturally. He never stopped believing God's promise, but he was made strong in his faith to father the child. And because he was mighty in faith and convinced that God had all the power needed to fulfill his promise, Abraham glorified God. I know one of the ways to glorify God in our life is to have faith and stand on his word. And this song says, I'm strong in faith and I'm giving glory to God. Let's declare it over 2023. Come on, join me. Oh, hey. I'm strong in faith. Giving glory to God. You watch your word to bring it to pass. Your word is true. I am confident. I proclaim it. You bring it to pass. I'm strong in faith and giving glory to God. You watch your word to bring it to pass. Your word is true, and I am confident. Can I proclaim it? You bring it to pass. Ah. It's true, and I am confident. 